Alright guys, so today I'm going to make a video about the history of Monero. The first document I think we should look at is called A Cypherpunk's Manifesto by Eric Hughes. In this document, he basically talks about why privacy is necessary for an open society in the electronic age. Um, how we have to rely on cryptography for privacy, and how we cannot expect governments, corporations, or other large faceless organizations to grant us privacy. We must defend our own privacy if we expect to have any. So these are very foundational ideas, and I encourage you to read through this entire document, but I'm not going to just for the sake of time. So all the things I'm going to talk about in this video, I will put in the video description, so check that out. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is, of course, the Bitcoin white paper. This is a foundational document to Monero as well, because this is the first cryptocurrency. It has it right here in the title, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So that's what Bitcoin was meant to be. At this point, I don't think it is. Um, cash is supposed to be private. Bitcoin is obviously not. Um, and it also costs way too much to send a Bitcoin transaction to, for it to be considered cash, in my opinion. So if you haven't read the Bitcoin white paper, I definitely think you should. So he's actually got a section here on privacy, and he says the public can see that someone is sending an amount to somebody else, but without information linking the transaction to anyone, they really can't do much with it. Um, we have seen how this is not true at all with the advent of chain analysis um, and basically voyeurism of the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, you don't necessarily need to know information about the individual to be able to gather enough information to eventually be able to figure out who they are. Um, if you're sending transaction after transaction to different people that are associated with you or something like that, they can definitely create a idea of who you are and eventually figure out who you are. Um, if you're KYC'd, obviously that tells them who you are pretty fast, pretty easily, and other things like that. So this information is really not that hard to, to find, if you, especially if you're a government agency. Um, this is extremely easy, and for an individual, it's also possible, but harder to do. The next thing that I want to go over is actually the CryptoNote white paper. Um, he actually... Nicholas Van Saberhagen was the person who came out with the CryptoNote white paper. Um, there was actually two versions. I'm just going to go over the second version here to make it a little quicker. Basically, he talks about the pitfalls of Bitcoin and possible solutions. So the first thing he talks about is the traceability of transactions, right? Um, he talks about how CryptoNote is unlinkable and untraceable and how this is needed for cash because i mean think about giving a dollar to somebody in the store nobody knows where it came from and you don't know where it's going um that's the way cash should be right he goes over some other things here but that's basically the biggest thing that he goes over um a few years later um monero actually did an annotated white paper here and they talked about what he said and how they improved it and stuff, but I will go over that in a minute. Um, so what came on after crypto note, after the crypto note white paper was Bitcoin. So as far as I know, Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency created with the crypto note white paper. Um, but it ended up being a scam. Um, basically what happened it is that the lead developers of Bitcoin um, did what is known as a stealth pre-mine. And basically what that is, is they basically faked mining 80% of the coin supply. And they did this in order to enrich themselves. So obviously you don't want this for a currency. It's obviously a scam. This is not something you want. And this is what caused a bunch of community members to say, screw this. We're going to create our own currency. And they decided to create um, a currency called BitMonero. Um, so 
Bit Monero started as a fork, a code base fork, not a chain fork, because of course if it was a chain fork it would have inherited all that 80% free mine that was so bad, right? So what happened was this user by the name of Thankful for Today decided that he wanted Bit Monero to be his project and his project only. Um, the community was talking about how they wanted, they didn't want one minute block times and they wanted different distribution. Um, they wanted perpetual inflation, AKA tail emission, things like this, right? There's some other things. And he basically took it over for himself and he started pushing things through himself and just ignoring all the discussion, which the rest of them were like, okay, screw this. We're not doing this. And they decided to fork it again and created a coin called Monero. So if you didn't know, Bit Monero actually means Bitcoin in the language of Esperanto. So coin in English is S is Monero in Esperanto. So quite literally, originally it was called Bitcoin in a different language. Um, so after they forked the project, they renamed it to just Monero or coin. And they decided to start developing on that. So once this happened, um, we're getting closer to where we are today. So next thing I want to go over is actually some key upgrades or key um, ways of how Monero works. So the first thing, obviously, tail emission. Um, the tail emission is basically the idea of a perpetual emission of coins. Now, I have a whole video on this. If you're worried that this means infinite inflation and you're scared about it, please go look at that video. That's not what it means at all. It's actually a very conservative um, emission, and there's a reason for it. It's not just for no reason at all. Okay, so go ahead and check that out. Um, the second thing is stealth addresses. So this is something that Monero has that Bitcoin doesn't. Stealth addresses are basically um, the idea that you can send Monero to somebody on the Monero chain and they can't see um, where the money went after that. The address itself is obfuscated on the blockchain. Um, the second thing, I mean the third thing I want to go over is ring signatures. Um, basically this is the idea that you have at this point in time, it's 11. Um, in the future, this is going to be upgraded to over 100 with Triptych. But, and I, I do plan on making a video about that as well. But this is the idea that um, you can have 11 people basically sign a transaction and only one of them is the true person that's sending the transaction. The rest are people that have sent transactions in the past. Um, and this is the idea that um, you have a 1 in 11 chance of determining who is the person who sent that transaction. Now this kind of compounds on itself because every single transaction that's sent in Monero has 11 um, signers. So even though you have um, 11 people signing this one transaction, um, the transactions that are signing the transaction that you're signing also have 11 people that are signing it. So it's kind of like this compounding effect that just makes it more anonymous over time. Um, the next thing is ring CT. This is AKA ring confidential transactions. This basically hides the amounts so that you can't see um, how much money is being sent back and forth. This is a fundamental idea. Um, if you could see the amounts being sent um, this completely breaks every other part of Monero down pretty hard. Um, so this is foundational. Recently, we had this thing called Bulletproofs. This came out, I believe, in 2018 or 2019. Um, this basically made um, the whole Monero blockchain uh, lighter. To, so to send a transaction, it dropped the size by over 80% and the fees along with it. So before this, it cost a lot more money to send a transaction in Monero than it does now. And then 
most recently is random acts. So this is the idea that mining should be egalitarian, one CPU, one vote, and that's actually talked about in the Bitcoin white paper here. So this is the idea of one CPU, one vote, which is lost on Bitcoin at this point. That's the main history of Monero that I wanted to talk about. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Um, if you like this content, please subscribe. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something today.